Welcome to our webinar, The Magic of Presto, Petabyte Scale SQL Queries in Seconds. My name is John Hammack, and I'm a developer evangelist for Treasure Data. And we're joined today by Camille Baida-Palakowski, who is the Chief Architect for Teradata Center for Hadoop in Boston, and also a contributor to Presto. So before we get started, let's have a look at our agenda. First of all, we're going to look at some background around Presto and some context. Big data processing engines, we're going to look at a timeline of when, when they emerged and what features each had. We're also going to look into basically the question, what is Presto? We'll have a look at some Presto internals, some features and add-ons, and we'll understand from that about the Presto connector architecture. Finally, we're going to be asking the question, why Presto? And we'll look at some takeaways from Presto at Netflix and Presto at Facebook. Finally, Camille's going to tell us about Presto and Teradata, and I'm going to tell you about Presto and Treasure Data. Finally, we'll have a little call to action, and then we're going to open the line for questions. So without further ado, let's get rolling. First, let's look at some background around Presto and understand how it relates to other players in the ecosystem. So when we think in terms of a timeline, it's always good to know, you know what things emerged first and what things came later because, of course, everything that came subsequently is going to be an improvement on presumably what came before it. So back in December of 2004, Google Labs published a paper on the MapReduce algorithm, which allows very large-scale computations to be trivially parallelized across large clusters of servers. This was an early attempt to discover how big data could be query and managed on commodity hardware. Apache Hive itself was originally developed at Facebook and it was open sourced around 2008. Google Dremel, which is part of Google BigQuery and the inspiration for Apache Drill appeared by 2010 and Drill itself entered the Apache incubator in August 2012. It's the open source version of Dremel. Presto's first commits appeared around the fall of 2012 at Facebook, and Presto was open sourced on GitHub as of November 2013. Cloudera Impala appeared on October 2012 and was generally available after May of 2013. And at Treasure Data, Hive was already in use by July 2011 for batch queries. By June of 2013, we started to use Impala and on January of 2014, we implemented our first Presto worker because we found amazing readability and maintainability issues with Presto code. And we did see a few at the time stability issues with Impala. So Camille, can you tell us about Teradata? Yeah, thank you, John. So at Teradata, we started working on Presto almost a year ago. We announced our open source initiative around this project at Hadoop Summit in 2015 when we appeared uh, on stage together with the Facebook Presto team. Uh, today, we are the second largest contributor to Presto, besides Facebook, obviously, and we serve our community by releasing an enterprise-grade distribution of Presto, which is still free and open source, obviously, uh, but we do offer uh, support for production deployments. Okay, thank you, Camille. So let's address the question, what is Presto? Well, Presto is an open source distributed SQL engine. It was originally developed by Facebook for their massive Hadoop data warehouse. Presto is a distributed system that runs on a cluster of machines. A full installation would include a coordinator and multiple workers. And queries are submitted from a client, such as a Presto CLI, to the coordinator, which parses, analyzes, and plans the query execution. And then it distributes the processing to the workers. So Presto is 100% open source distributed SQL query engine. As I mentioned, it's, it was, it's designed for interactive analysis on petascale data sets. It's actually more suitable for ad hoc queries than Hive is, and we'll see why in a minute. Of course, it's written in very highly optimized Java with a built-in in-memory query layer. It's designed to isolate the query layer from the data storage layer. So we'll look a little bit about that architecture and, uh, for example, the file formats and so forth later. Presto is also CPU efficient for any query, including ad hoc analysis, and it conforms to ANSI SQL. Camille, maybe you could tell us what Presto isn't. Sure. So Presto isn't just a SQL translation layer into something like MapReduce or Tez or Spar. It's suitable for, oh, actually, sorry, not suitable, <laughs> sorry, not suitable for long-running batch queries. Uh, 
because it does not have committed query fault tolerance and still to this day. Um, it's also not optimized for ETL processing and it's not designed for short transactions such as inserts, updates, or deletes. And it's also not a full stack database or data warehouse because it does not come with its own storage engine. Thank you, Camille. So when we consider comparing Hive and Presto, Hive is an SQL executor on Hadoop primarily. Hive is for parsing SQL, compiling, and submitting MapReduce jobs, essentially. Hive is good for large, complex queries like joins, and Hive is stable, has high throughput, but rather high latency, so a bit of wait time for smaller queries. Now Presto itself is a massive parallel processing engine for SQL. It does this MPP using threads, and we'll learn about tasks and splits later. Presto is good for small or middle-sized queries, so it's going to be able to do a small or middle-sized query with much, much less latency than Hive. And Presto has high performance, and as I said before, low latency for small queries. So Camille, what can you tell us about Presto architecture? All right, so let's have a closer look at this. So first of all, a Presto client is the interface that we use to send queries to our system, and uh, that will also uh, return results. Uh, and it's typically either a CLI or some kind of application or BI tool that, that uses ODBC or JDBC driver. Uh, our coordinator orchestrates the entire work from parsing the queries to planning and executing and then finally scheduling tasks across the cluster. And of course, Presto workers are involved in the executing the actual tasks. Um, they are deployed on every node in the cluster. They start from by reading tables, data from the table, and applying predicates, computing joins and aggregations. And the final result is streamed back to the client. When you look at this diagram, you can see there are components that work interact with various connector APIs. So, for example, Parser talks to Metadata API, and then the scheduler gets split information from the data location API. And then finally, workers at the bottom, they read the actual table data using the data stream API. And the crucial point here is that the data source can be basically anything that can connect to, Presto can connect to using its connector architecture. And uh, Presto is not a data store, as we mentioned before, it's just a SQL query engine. And that will let you to query data from whatever data source contains this information. So maybe you could tell me a little bit about Presto syntax. So we mentioned Presto speaks SQL. It actually speaks ANSI SQL dialect. And it does not offer today a full SQL coverage, but there's enough SQL to support the majority of your queries. And obviously you can use select from where with various join clauses and then perform group by and having on top of that. And then there's obviously distinct and union and order by and limit clause. So all the standard SQL syntax elements. And in addition to those, Presto supports JSON, array, map, and row for your flexible data structures. So that allows you to perform any windowing, statistical, and approximate aggregation, as well as a nest and table sample clauses. So all in all, it's essentially majority of the SQL you would like to use anyways. OK, thank you, Camille. Let's look at some Presto features and add-ons. And let's learn a little bit more about the Presto features and Presto's connector architecture. So here's an example of a Presto connector. This is PrestoGress. PrestoGress is a client driver which provides ODBC and JDBC connectivity to Presto. It does this by using modified PG pool tool to authenticate and rewrite queries before sending them to Postgres. P PrestoGress allows clients to use PostgreSQL, of course, to run queries on Presto. It provides a PostgreSQL protocol gateway for Presto. And it was originally picked to use PostgreSQL stable ODBC JDBC driver. And finally, you can, you can view the source at uh, github.com treasure data prestogress to get a sense of how the code is put together for something like this. Now this is a great solution in the beginning, but we'll see over time that these are being replaced by Presto's native ODBC and JDBC drivers that are provided for free from Teradata. So Camille, tell us a bit more about Presto data sources and connectors. All right, so 
As mentioned before, Presto is able to query from a variety of data sources. And Presto itself does not incorporate a storage engine, but rather it provides a pluggable way to talk to multiple engines from a single SQL interface. So what it means exactly? So we have a number of connectors today that ship with Presto, and there are several categories. So for example, you can talk to discipline file systems, such as HDFS, Hadoop file system, or Amazon S3 storage. And those dispute file systems will contain the metadata in the H catalog or Hive Metastore. And then the next, next class will be NoSQL data stores, such as Cassandra, Kafka, or Redis. And then you can actually talk to some other database engines. Okay, so Presto is a SQL layer, but you can talk to other database engines, such as MySQL or Postgres. And then there's a number of sort of Test for admin connectors that, for example, Black Hole, TPCH, and System that ship with Presto. They just allow you to perform various tests and demonstrations and learn what's going on in the system. But in addition to those, there's an also a number of custom connectors for internal or proprietary systems. So, for example, Teradata has built a query grid connector for Presto. So that will allow you to connect to your Teradata from Presto. And what's more, the open source community is building new connectors all the time. So some examples include connectors for MongoDB and Elasticsearch, and those are still work in progress. But the, the point is that the community is building the connectors for more and more platforms. So Presto can query all of them now. Nice. Thank you, Camille. So when we consider ported file formats, Presto is a columnar query engine. So for optimal performance, any file reader should provide columns directly to Presto. However, the following file formats are compatible for data. So we have the RC, the record columnar file format. This is a data storage structure that determines how to minimize the space required for relational data in HDFS. We have the ORC file, which is an optimization of this. It is the optimized row columnar format. And this provides a more efficient way to store relational data than the IRC file, purportedly reducing the data storage up to 75%. Apache Parquet is another columnar file format that offers similar compression benefits as ORC. We have the sequence file, which is one of the first binary file formats for Hadoop. This is a binary stream that contains key and value pairs. And of course, we also support delimited text as well. So Camille, I would like to learn a little bit more about how queries run. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so as we discussed before, Presto comes with its own MPP SQL execution engine. And there are a few details how the queries work. So first of all, your SQL statement will be converted into stages that uh, run SQL operators. Table scan operators at the bottom of the query plan will read data from splits. Splits are essentially data blocks or chunks and units of, of your data. Then each stage of a query plan will be parallelized with tasks that are running across all the nodes in my cluster. So we get the full benefit of uh, the parallel architecture here. In addition to having multiple threads on every node to, to, uh, to also parallelize the intranode processing. There's no wait time between stages because data is pipelined from one stage to the other. And the, the sort of one of the elements of that here is obviously if one task, task fails, that will mean that the entire query will fail because all of them are talking in real time. Uh, the memory to memory transfer allows over the network allows us to eliminate unnecessary disk IO. So after reading the, the original tables, we no longer touch disk, and that obviously brings a great interactive performance. And all the intermediate data throughout the query plan, it needs to fit in aggregate memory of the cluster. If, if it cannot fit in that memory, obviously the query will fail. And we'll talk about some ways to improve on that in the future. Thank you, Camille. So let's have a few notes on uh, Presto query execution performance. Namely, to address the question, how is query execution actually faster on Presto? Well, there's in-memory processing. So presumably, there's not a lot of disk writes going on. The limit of that being on the other side of the thing is you need to have enough memory to be able to do this. Presto also supports pipeline executions across nodes. 
massive parallel processing style. So that's another thing that speeds it up. There's also vectorized columnar processing. Presto supports multi-threaded execution, which keeps all CPU cores busy. Presto is of course written in highly tuned Java with efficient flat memory data structures. And it's very careful coding of inner loops as well. And of course there is runtime bytecode generation, another speed optimization. Presto does support an optimized ORC reader with parquet optimizations ongoing currently. And we get excellent performance with interactive SQL analytics. So if we consider Presto performance as compared to Hive performance, this is a little part of a feasibility study that we did inside of Treasure Data, which is essentially a Hive Presto performance comparison, which where we took three aggregate queries and we're running on the same data on each engine. So pink is Presto and the purple is Hive. We can see from the inset the numbers for the first eight series in the graph. The takeaway from this is that there are significantly more Presto queries than Hive queries that we could run in under one minute. The Hive queries do tend to take longer, so if we look at the, at the space between one to two minutes, there are 6.5 times as many Hive queries that we were running uh, as Presto queries that took that long. Between three to eight minutes, there were 10 times as many Hive queries as Presto queries. Same queries on the same data set that took this much longer. So why Presto, right? Let's look at some cases of Presto in production, or at least some takeaways from those. So at Netflix, eventually they were running over 200 node production cluster on EC2. They had over 25 petabytes in S3 of data files in the parquet format, and they're doing over 350 active users of 3,000 queries daily. And I should, I should say that this, uh, this data is slightly old. So this probably, you can imagine the numbers going up a little bit. But some of the takeaways from Netflix were, at least one of their engineers was quoted as saying, the key takeaway is that queries that take one to two MapReduce phases in Hadoop run one, 10 to 100 times faster in Presto. So this obviously presumably makes Presto a better choice for ad hoc or one-off queries. The same guy went on to say that Presto makes the lives of our users a lot easier. It tremendously improves their productivity. And they also went, went on to say, we have learned from our experience that getting involved and contributing back to open source technologies is the best way to make sure that it works for our use cases in a fast paced and involving environment. And this, I think, sheds a little bit of light on the rationale of why a lot of companies like to do open source, because by supporting the oh, whole, they're also supporting themselves and they're also giving something to the community and getting a lot of productivity from it. Presto at Facebook. Well, Presto, of course, was invented at Facebook. And looking at this data, which again is maybe a few months old, Facebook was running multiple production clusters with hundreds of nodes. And they have a massive, or I should say had, a massive 300 petabyte Hadoop data warehouse. Of course, a very large sharded MySQL installation, which they're trying to basically upgrade and make more more efficient and they were experiencing a growing usage of Raptor SSD based storage. Obviously there's thousands of uh, internal daily active users trying to get uh, analytics out of Facebook's infrastructures running uh, 10 to hundreds of concurrent queries and one of the takeaways from them was they said that Hadoop, MapReduce and Hive are designed for large-scale reliable computation and are optimized for overall system throughput. But as our warehouse grew to petabyte scale and our needs evolved, it became clear that we needed an interactive system optimized for very low query latency. So hopefully by now you're starting to see the pattern. Hive is great for batch queries. If I'm, if I'm running a batch query on a very large piece of data, then Hive might be the way to go. If, uh, if I need an interactive system, if I'm doing one-off queries, then Presto might just be the thing. So, Camille, can you tell us a little bit about the story of the Presto story. and Teradata? Yes, absolutely. So, actually, let me start from the beginning. So, about a year ago, we did a comprehensive internal study of a number of open source SQL engines. And we selected Presto as a product to contribute to because we were 
we're very impressed with its speed, first of all, as you already have seen from other examples. We are also very impressed with uh, the already existing users and their success stories. And those are, you know, primary uh, reasons. But we are also very like the, like the architecture, which is pretty solid. It includes this NTP SQL engine and a pluggable storage design, really good. And last but not least, uh, Presto has a very clean code base and it's easily extensible and maintainable. So our developers really love this at first sight. And today we have about 20 full-time engineers dedicated to working on Presto. And we were actually recently recognized by Facebook as the largest contributor to the project. And we, we in fact, will have seven out of top 10 contributors today. But our goal really is to make Presto the leading SQL and Hadoop engine for everyone, and especially ready for enterprise users. And those were obviously not but that wasn't something that Presto was good at. So to that end, we contributed, and we're still working on those contributions, such as comprehensive testing and packaging, and various installation and administration monitoring tools. That was our major focus for our phase one, released in summer last year. Then moving to YARN and AMBAR integrations, as well as security, especially Kerberos, um, that's actually still ongoing work, and then we want to do LDAP in the future. And then we would like to also contribute by providing enterprise-grade ODBC and JDBC drivers, which was really a weak spot for Presto. Now we already offer ODBC driver. You can download it for free from our website, and JDBC driver is coming soon. And throughout this effort, we basically want to enhance SQL syntax of Presto to enable and then eventually also certify various business intelligence tools. And basically, all those contributions are good, they're all going to open source, they're free for everyone to use. But yet another thing we do for the community and for the Presto users is we every three months we ship a new version of our distribution of Presto. It's basically the most stable release of Presto you can find. It's free for everyone to use, which is great. And for people who would like to put this in production and run for real, we, we offer support and for, for any production deployment you would like to, to have. And then finally, for Teradata, existing Teradata customers, we offer now a Presto-based query grid connectors that will make remote Hadoop querying really fast. Thank you, Camille. So let me tell you a little bit about the parallel story of a Presto and Treasure Data. So Treasure Data, as a cloud-based analytics pipeline, offers multiple query engines for users to analyze their data without the hassle of building up their own analytics infrastructure from scratch. The way we got here was pretty interesting, though. Originally, starting with Hive on Hadoop, we later added Impala, but found it to have some stability and maintainability issues at the time. When we realized we wanted faster, exploratory, ad hoc queries, we discovered Presto. However, although we found Presto to be a decent complement to Hive in terms of speed, the choice of which engine to use really depended on where and in what context the query was run. So during our own feasibility studies, we still needed to run trials to gauge general query performance, and we found the results to be inconsistent at times. For example, latency on short queries was generally worse on Hive than Presto, but not always. Part of this we could chalk up to the fact that Presto did not retry for failure. Once one task in a query would fail, the whole query would fail and it would simply move on to the next scheduled job. So the results, the comparative results over many queries between Hive and Presto did turn out to be inconsistent. However, a few general guidelines emerged when we went beyond comparing short query latency. So for example, when a source data is extra large, for example, more than one terabyte, it made little sense, it makes little sense to try to manipulate the data within Presto. Hive is it's better with its disk write mechanism, because of course it, there's, there may not be enough memory, right? If you're doing complex joins, Hive is also probably going to be a better choice, insofar as this depends on balancing memory with disk writes, and Presto memory isn't cooled. On the other hand, if you know you'll be using standard SQL, then Presto might be a better bet. Lastly, in terms of semantics, Hive will attempt retries if something is wonky in your query syntax. However, Presto will never do this, so your query will simply fail, 
you, so you better have your syntax correct. In Treasure Data, you can do one data source with many query engines, actually. Once it became clear that we could continue to offer both Hive and Presto as complementary offerings, we made it up to the data consumer to decide for which purpose and in which context their query would be run. Am I running a repeat batch job? Are those queries running natively on Hadoop? Then Hive is likely going to be a better choice. Am I doing exploratory queries? Am I doing ad hoc queries? Where does the data reside natively? Not on Hadoop? Then Presto is probably a better choice. In either case, our Plasma DB architecture offers a separate store for metadata as opposed to object storage. So Camille, I'd like to hear a little bit about upcoming features and the Presto roadmap. So uh, we have a number of features here on the list. Some of them are in the spirit of having better and more comprehensive SQL syntax. So we are actually very soon shipping Decimal and Varka with limit support. We also are working currently on correlated subqueries and non equijoins that will probably come later this year. And then further out, we would like to support Presto running huge joins and group bytes via spill the disk, right? So as you heard from John before, like today, Presto you know, needs to have lots of memory to compute certain complex queries. We would like to help uh, with that in the future. There are also a bunch of enhancements to the DML and uh, DML statements for create table and views and delete and inserts. Some of them already implemented. The big focus today is actually um, making uh, Kerberos support for end-to-end -end Kerberized Hadoop clusters. So that's something we're working on. And then uh, later this year, we'll be also enhancing security and using LDAP. And on top of that, we would like to continually work various performance and scalability improvements. And some of them are coming actually pretty soon. Thank you, Camille. So here's our call to action. If you want to try running Presto in the cloud, sign up for Treasure Data. If you're seeking information about enterprise support and integration with Teradata, contact Teradata. And we have our, our contact information here. It's in the presentation. Now, I want to thank you for joining our webinar and open up the line for questions. All right, John, Camille, thank you very much. Uh, so, you know, the most common question we've got a few times, is this webinar or will it was it recorded? Will it be available afterwards? Yes, absolutely. Uh, typically, you know, the production time is about a week. We just want to, you know, cut out any sound blips, etc. But this file will be made available to everyone who was on this webinar. All right, so more of a technical question. So is there a maximum amount of memory allowed for a Presto query? And uh, Camille, I think that one's for you. Sure. So memory on Presto, obviously we're talking about the aggregate memory across the entire cluster. Uh, on every node, every worker owns its own share of memory. So depending on how you configure this. And together, you, you, we, are, we also you can configure how much a particular query can use memory, right? So, so you can control those things. Altogether, obviously, if your data is really, really big and you expect uh, lots of intermediate data produced that will exceed available RAM, you're better off using something that can split the disk today. And that's, for example, Hive. Okay. And then another one, I think, Camille, why would I use Presto versus Impala? So uh, as you heard from this presentation, you know, Presto is interactive SQL engine, but so is Impala. But Presto has this added benefit of uh, being able to query multiple different data sources and platforms. And that's something actually pretty unique. So Impala or Hive, they can't really do that. So that's what, what would drive your decision. And in addition, Presto actually runs independent of any Hadoop distribution. So you may use it with any Hadoop distribution, unlike Impala. So that's also something to, to consider. All right, great. Camille, you're very popular today. We have another one. So, you know, because uh, Teradata has, you were saying, seven out of the, the 10 top 10 sort of contributors to the open source project, you know, where I think it's appropriate to ask, where do you guys see the future of Presto going in the next year? Right. So, as I mentioned, we want to make Presto Enterprise ready for a variety of different integrations so that people, enterprise customers, can be confident in deploying Presto. But that's table stakes, okay? Security, integration with BI tools, 
all of, the, all of those elements are table stakes. What we want to really ensure is that we push the boundaries on the SQL coverage, on performance, stability, and scale, because those are actually unique values that Presto brings. As you have seen from the production deployments that John described earlier, uh, Presto today is used as massive scale, hundreds of nodes, production clusters at Facebook, at Netflix, and there is a bunch of other actually other people using this at high scale. That's pretty unique, and those those are those customers uh, basically those users. They serve as a great example of how Presto can be utilized as, as a massively scalable interactive SQL environment. All right, thank you. Uh, for either, but um, you know, again, Camille, based on your experience, maybe you'll be better. I don't know. So Will is asking, do you have any benchmarking comparing Apache Drill and Presto? I don't have any benchmark like that. I, I haven't actually seen that too many drill benchmarks. I do recall that there was one benchmark published at Hadoop Summit last year that was comparing lots of different SQL engines, including Presto and Impala and Hive. And I think Drill was there as well. I can't, I can't be, but if you Google maybe Intel, that was the something done by Intel IT department, and uh, I forget the title of the presentation, but you, you, you could probably find it on the Hadoop Summit website. Yeah, and I know from the Treasure Data side, that's not a query engine that we have natively integrated into our platform, so we don't have any benchmarks on that personally as well. Well, I don't see any more questions coming in. Once again, you know, we want to thank everyone who took time out of their day to listen to our presenters. John, we want to thank you. And Camille, we want to thank you as well. Again, we will follow up with everyone with a copy of this recording. We look forward to hearing from you all soon. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.